Hi there. <laughs> you look beautiful. <laughs> Hi there. Uh, so I'm Sasha Costanza Chalk. I'm currently a uh, fellow at the Berkman Center for Internet and Society, uh, based at Harvard University. And I'm also a postdoctoral research associate uh, at the University of Southern California Annenberg School. So I'm out here in LA currently. And uh, actually, this fall, I'm going to be joining the faculty at MIT's Comparative Media Studies uh, program, where I'll be a assistant professor of civic media. Um, so my work, in general, focuses on how community-based organizations and social movement organizations and grassroots groups have been using digital media and the new media space as a way to organize and mobilize and uh, generate their own stories and journalism and content and then share that uh, you know, via the web and across uh, multiple platforms, actually. But so what I was uh, asked by, uh, by Jean to do today is to talk to you a little bit about this project that I've worked on for several years here in Los Angeles, uh, which is called VOSMOB or Voces Mobiles, which is mobile voices. And um, so I'm going to actually switch now to a screen, a screen share. I have a little uh, kind of PowerPoint that I'm going to walk you guys through that project a little bit, show you, show you a little bit about what it is and where it came from, uh, how we built it, some of the challenges that we faced, and then we'll just uh, get into a, a conversation. So let me just switch to my screen here. And if you could just let me know, can you see my screen now? Yeah. All right, great. How about now? OK, wonderful. So uh, I'm here to talk about VOSMOB. Uh, you, can, you can also be kind of looking at it and browsing uh, on, on your computers if you've got laptops there on VOSMOB.net or on your smartphones. So Mobile Voices is a community-based digital journalism project based here in Los Angeles which is designed to project the voices of immigrant workers by appropriating mobile phones for popular communication. It's a project that uh, we've been building since 2006, and we've been supported by a number of different, uh, both private companies and public foundations, including the MacArthur Digital Media and Learning uh, Grant. We won, we won a digital media and learning uh, competition two years ago. Uh, the ITF has supported us, and the Annenberg School, and Nokia also started us off with an initial grant for some software development and with, uh, with a number of phones. So what is Mobile Voices and where does it come from? The project has really been built as a collaboration between USC Annenberg and a community-based organization here in LA called EDEPSCA, the Institute of Popular Education of Southern California. So EDEPSCA has been around since 1994. They're a community-based organization that works with immigrant communities in LA, especially with uh, Mexican and Central American immigrants. Um, they have a really wide range of programs that they do. Um, they run uh, five-day labor centers around the city of Los Angeles. They have a contract with the city to do that. Um, they have a... Uh, green gardening cooperative that does environmentally sustainable uh, gardening training and then uh, they the green gardeners get certified and then they get contracts around the city to to do gardening um, they have the magic cleaners co-op which is a household work cooperative where uh, women learn how to use uh, uh, non-toxic chemicals for home cleaning and that's a worker-owned cooperative they have a uh, childhood, uh, early childhood education program called Aprendamos, where they do all different kinds of literacy from English language to digital literacy and a range of other, you know, programs providing a lot of uh, services and education and organizing in the community here in Los Angeles. So EDEPSCA's interest in building a community journalism site really comes out of the context of uh, hate speech. So if you Google the word day laborer, the first thing that's going to come up is a site called daylaborers.org. 
And the tagline of daylaborers.org, as you can see, is some of the most violent murderers, rapists, and child molesters are illegal aliens who work as day laborers. So daylaborers.org um, is, a, is a hate site which was created by uh, affiliates of the Minuteman Project, which is the, the same group which has now been pretty thoroughly discredited after some of its leadership were involved in the uh, gun murder of uh, Bersenia Flores. I don't know if you guys heard about that out there, but it was a, a national case. Um, and so what the folks from daylaborers.org do is they kind of go around to day labor sites and then they yell racist insults at guys who are waiting for work and they say, you know, hey, you wet backs and stuff like that. And then when they get a response like this, they'll quickly snap a picture and then they put it up on the web. So they had a very smart and sophisticated media strategy for painting a particular picture of the of day laborers and the day labor community. And of course, day laborers are you know much more than these images that are being presented of them. Uh, you know, day laborers, um, at least in Los Angeles, you know, it's mostly um, first generation immigrants from Mexico and from Central America. Um, who you know come here to work so that they can then send money back home and, and support their families. Um, people have a wide range of documentation status. People do a wide range of labor tasks, a lot of construction, um, a lot of house painting, pretty wide wide range of stuff that people do. Um, but of course, they're you know human beings with complicated stories and lives. But they're pretty invisible in the mass media and in the online space. As we just saw, they're, they're sort of being attacked by these hate groups. So the problem is, how can they speak back and narrate the story of their own communities and create news and information that's relevant to them if they don't have any access to digital tools? So this is a map by Ali Madaris and Pitkin uh, from 2006, which is a composite uh, technology index that measured um, it's basically a combined measure of do you have a computer in the home, broadband in the home, a uh, number of cell phones in the home, and a number of other measures around people's levels of digital access in LA County. And you know, basically, this is just a fancy way of demonstrating that uh, you know, low-income neighborhoods have the least level of access to digital tools and skills of anybody else, and that it's that access levels are very highly clustered in central Los Angeles and south Los Angeles. And if you look at a map of, um, of, so of socioeconomic status and immigration status um, and income level, you'll see that it looks exactly like this map. So all of that is just to say that you know, the day laborer community and new immigrants in Los Angeles have l the least access to digital tools at all. And so they're, you know, what can you do in that context? They're being talked about online, but they don't have the ability to get online and you know, comment and generate media and create their own kind of stories so that they could you know, have that digital dialogue, participate in the digital sphere, and tell a different story about themselves and their communities than, than what the hate groups were doing. So in this context, we began in uh, 2006 and 2007. Um, a group of researchers from USC and a group from uh, from EDEPSCA, this community-based organization that works extensively with day laborers, started saying, well, what tools do people have access to? And of course, we said, well, you know, people have mobile phones. So we went to five day labor centers around the city, and we did uh, an, an initial survey talking to people about what, what phones do they have, what kind of plans do they have, and what do they do with those phones? And uh, this was just the initial survey. We later expanded this to um, another uh, 200 day laborers. But, and this, the numbers were pretty much the same. And we found that about 80% have a cell phone. A third of them have a prepaid plan. And we looked at what people do with their phones. Um, people use them, you know, uh, everyone used them for work to keep in touch with employers. And they also use them to keep in touch with family and friends. And about half of them said that they use them for emergencies. And we looked at the features that they used on the phones. 30% were sending texts. Half of them were receiving texts. About half of them said they took photos, but it was really interesting because we saw only 16% only said that they had sent photos anywhere. And with videos, it was similar. Only about a fifth of them were, were taking videos, and almost none of them were sending the videos anywhere. 
So we saw this as a real opportunity. We said, okay, well, you know, 80% of these folks have cell phones, and half of them are already taking pictures with the phones, but they're not sharing them. They're not uploading them onto the web. They're not spreading the stories that they're creating or the images that they're taking. Um, you know, they're remaining on their phones. So we saw that as an opportunity and said, um, you know, what could we do to build a uh, digital journalism system that would really work with the tools that this community has access to? Now, we weren't doing this out of nowhere, and I would actually uh, encourage people who are interested in trying to get community engaged uh, journalists, um, you know, working with you and your organizations or working with your site or creating content for you. Um, what really helped us build this was that IDEPSCA already had a print publication that they were producing that was written by day laborers, and they'd been doing this for several years. So they had a newspaper called Jornada 22, and they had a core group of, of about five to ten day laborers and household workers who already were producing this newspaper and had been doing that for several years. So. Um, when it came time to build the system, we didn't just kind of start from nowhere. We got together with that group of people who was already doing their own, you know, press and said, well, how could we add mobile phones and computers on top of what you guys are already doing with Jornada 22 and with your newspaper? And it was really key that we decided to build a system together with them not, not just build a system on our own and then bring it there and say, okay, we made you guys uh, you know, a system and this is how you use it, we said, well, if this is really going to work and your community is going to be able to actually use it, let's build it together. So we used a methodology known as popular education. So this is a, a system that obviously DEPSCA is using for the last 20 years. They're the Institute of Popular Education. But the idea is that, you know, while, all, while there may be people with particular expertise, when it comes time to actually build something together um, and develop shared knowledge, you know, everybody in the room has some kind of expertise. You know, I may know a lot about how to create software that will work with mobile phones, but Manuel Mancia, who's a day laborer, knows a lot about, you know, what it's like to be a day laborer and how it might actually work for day laborers to get involved in content production. And, um, you know, Marilu Gonzalez, who's a household worker, has some really good insights about what types of stories people might want to tell and how they might want to actually use their phone to do that. So we use popular education uh, to kind of brainstorm together and plan what the system is going to look like and figure out together how it's going to work. So for the last couple of years, we have face-to-face -face meetings uh, with this core group. Every Tuesday evening at Edepska's main office, we get together and we look at stories people are producing, we discuss them, we talk about how the system works, and we generate basically feature requests and bug reports for the software content management system that we're, that we're building. Another framework that people might be more familiar with is the idea of participatory de design. So this is the idea, again, it's similar to popular education. If you build a tool together and design the site together with the community that's going to actually be using it, one, it's going to be more useful because it'll actually work in a way that, that people have had input into. And two, it'll, it'll get a lot more buy-in from the community when it comes time to actually go produce content because they've been involved in creating the site so they actually you know, feel ownership over it and are going to let their friends and family and other people in their social networks know about it. So again, rather than just kind of build a site and then hope that a community will come and kind of use it, it's really about building it together with, with the community of interest. So this is, these are some images from uh, graphic design workshops that we did where we uh, and again, you know, how do you do graphic design and web design with a community of folks that really isn't online and, and has, doesn't have a lot of experience with, with the web? Well, we, we did a range of workshops where we looked at, at what it means to do graphic design. We printed out examples of both print papers and online uh, you know, news sites and had people discuss them. And you can see here sticky hearts that people put up on them where they highlighted features that they would like to see incorporated into our site design. So we're kind of working hand in hand with graphic designers to implement a design that's based on um, these workshops that we were doing together with them, using paper mockups and, and a range of other tools. Now we've been building everything using free and open source software. Um, Vosmob.net is built on top of Drupal, which is a very popular 
uh, free and open source content management system that's being used by a lot of the a lot of major news organizations are now using it. Uh, the White House has been using it. Um, it's one of the most popular um, free open source content management systems. Actually, it's one of the most popular content management systems that's out there. So we specifically chose to do this, um, one, because it's a very robust and powerful CMS, and two, because we really wanted the code that we've been developing and the modules and plugins that we're making for Drupal um, to be available to the wider Drupal community. Um, we're building these tools for community engagement, and we want other people to be able to use them and add them to their own sites if they're interested. And then the, con the content that we're producing is all Creative Commons um, attribution, share-alike, non-commercial licensed. And um, are, are you guys familiar with Creative Commons uh, content licensing? Yes. Oh, yes. OK, so some people said yes, some said no. So basically, uh, Creative Commons is a way uh, for you to retain rights over your content, but while making it easier for people to spread your content across the web without fear that they're going to be sued or asked to take it down. So basically, Creative Commons licenses let you decide um, which pieces of a standard copyright license you want to retain control over. So a standard, a standard copyright license um, basically says uh, that if someone wants to use the content, they're going to have to give attribution to you, say where it came from. They're also going to have to um, uh, pay you for that content. And that's a, a basically a, a, you know, the commercial exploitation of the work. They're going to have to contact you before they're able to, to use that content anywhere, um, unless it's in a fair use context. Um, and so what that does is it reduces the spreadability of your media. Because it means that when people want to share your content across the web via social, the social web or on their own sites, they feel like they're going to have to contact you first to get your permission to share that content. So in our case, since what we're trying to do is change the conversation about this immigrant community and have the stories that they produce be the stories that get seen more broadly than the ones that are produced by these hate sites, we wanted to make the content as spreadable as possible. So we licensed it share-alike attribution non-commercial. And that means that as long as people aren't making commercial use of the work, um, you know, they can, they can just take the content on bossmob.net and they can put it up on their own site. They can forward it around. They can share it and spread it. They can even remix it if they want to. Now, that only changes if they're going to then use it um, in a commercial context. So in other words, if someone's going to sell content from bossmob.net, um, then they're going to have to contact the, the authors to get the rights to do that. But otherwise, they can freely spread it around the web. And this, this is something that I would highly encourage any of you to do. Um, to really think about, well, if your goal is to get your content seen really widely, you might want to think about exploring Creative Commons licenses so that your, your media will be more spreadable. So, so what, how does the system work? What did we actually build together with this community organization? Um, so we built a, a content management system. It, it lives on a web server. You can post media into it either by calling a number uh, and leaving an audio message, which then posts onto the site as kind of a, you know, so that's sort of like a podcast function. You can send SMS messages in, um, and those will post as text only. But you can also send uh, MMS and multimedia messages. And a lot of people don't know this, but uh, so this is picture messages, basically. A lot of people don't know that even cheap prepaid phones support what's called multi slide MMS. And that means that even on a non smartphone, most phones, uh, if they do have a camera, which is the vast majority of phones that are out there now, um, you can cr take multiple pictures and attach them to a single message. And you can send it as one MMS, which is very inexpensive. It's uh, 25 cents if you have no messaging package. But even on the prepaid plans, a lot of people have messaging packages where they're paying 5 bucks a month for unlimited messaging or 10 bucks a month. So you can then basically send that message. Um, with multiple uh, slides and audio clips and sometimes even short video clips. And we have basically built filters so that those messages can arrive on the site as a kind of little compact audio slideshow. And I'll show you some examples of those in a minute. Um, so basically, we're doing calls, SMS, and MMS to post stuff onto the site. We're also doing registration of users via their first post. So again, this is a community that doesn't have computer access, so our use case isn't 
you know, they're not going to go register on the, on the web and then start posting. They're going to be able to actually post directly from their phone. And that first story that they send, they get a message back saying, hey, thanks for posting your story to VosMob. Would you like a blog? If so, send your username. And they send a username back, and they actually then get registered on the site. And they then have their own, uh, their own blog. So basically, the whole thing is built around this use case where people are start becoming community reporters and bloggers directly from their phones. So that's how we get content in. We can also then send stories from VosMob.net back out to people's phones uh, as uh, SMS and also as multimedia messages. We've recently built uh, geolocative functionality into the site so that people can um, basically specify how their stories are going to appear on a map. Um, and we do that by grabbing the latitude and longitude from the uh, image files themselves. A lot of phones embed latitude and longitude into image files. So you can actually scrape that content, and then you can map the stories that users are posting to your site. And in case their phone doesn't have GPS, we have set it up so that they can um, just basically use a tag within the body of their message uh, to specify the location of the story, and then it'll appear on a map. And then how, how else do we get content out of the site uh, and back into circulation in this community? Well, I already mentioned that they have this print newspaper called Jornada 22. So they do a run of uh, 10,000 copies of that uh, 16 pages. That comes out uh, every, it's supposed to come out every month, but actually they haven't been getting it out every month. It's been every month and a half to two months. And that gets distributed around the city of Los Angeles on the buses and in day labor centers. Um, and we also, uh, have had content now uh, appearing on radio on the local uh, Pacifica affiliate KPFK has been basically you know people have been downloading some of the audio and incorporating that into um, into different Spanish language radio shows that that happen here in in, in Los Angeles um, and then we've had people um, incorporating some of our video content into various uh, video uh, video podcasts and and um, and uh, there's been some broadcasts. There's been actually a fair amount of broadcast coverage on Telemundo, on uh, CNN in Espanol, and in a number of other um, print and broadcast media. LA Times have been covering the project, and they typically include some media elements uh, that's been produced by the workers themselves when they do stories about Osma. Um, this is the uh, graphic design of the site that was created uh, sort of with the workers over time. So you've got kind of your featured you know, stories in the middle that appear in a carousel. Um, you've got a breaking news feed that appears. Um, and then we've got featured reporters, which are automatically generated based on uh, the, the stories that get featured over time. And then we've also got sort of group functionality so that different organizations, as they start to come in and use VosMob.net, can have their own kind of group space on the site, which can also then get sent out to phones of those people who are subscribed just to those groups, again, via SMS and, and MMS. And so I think it's worth then, uh, I guess, just you know, showing a couple, couple stories that have been produced through this process. I, you know, I actually don't know if the audio is going to come through here. So I'll, whoops. So let me just um, grab one of these and uh, let's actually get to the I'll pop out to the to the website itself, and you guys can take a look at some of these stories. So I'm going to pull up the uh, the site itself. Um, so this is this is the site vosmob.net. Um, you can see that we're translating stories into English and Spanish. Um, currently, we've got uh, as featured stories, you know, reports back from community events. Um, we've got Ron Fitty, who's one of the VosMob bloggers, uh, did a story with three images and a short text about uh, his certification as a green gardener with the Native Green program. Um, you can see here that this could then be shared back out across you know, the social web um, and you know, Facebook, Twitter, MySpace. Um, it can also be posted uh, via mobile phone. Um, and it can be sent, you know, sent out through through email. So again, making these stories spreadable. Um, we've got a story up here about uh, the hundredth anniversary of Arizona and the centennial celebration there. So this story has uh, audio clip attached to it. 
which I don't know if you guys are going to be able to hear it or not Let's, with this screen share. Let's see. Looks like you might not be able to hear it. Um, but so basically, the, just so you guys see the interface, so there's audio that would play um, along with the images that have been sent in. So this is just to sort of report back again from the you know 100 years anniversary of uh, of Arizona and the analysis of the blogger. This has been translated into English. Um, and then we've got a really wide range of different types of stories that appear. Everything from you know community events, as you're seeing here, to um, let's see. Um, let me go switch to the Spanish site has a lot more current uh, content on it. So here's a report back from uh, International Women's Day in Los Angeles. Um, and again, this is I think you guys probably can't hear that very well. So unfortunately, this remote presentation of the site isn't the, uh, the best way to, to do that. But you, I, I encourage you to kind of you know, browse through the site yourself to check it out. Um, maybe I can, I'm going to play this short video, which might, uh, the audio might be a little bit better on this one. So you can get a sense from the folks involved in VOSMOB itself about uh, why they participate and how they think about the project. No, actually, playing. actually um, could someone there do me a, do me a favor? Uh, what you could actually do is uh, pull up a just a web browser on the computer that's connected to the screen there. And then go to vosmob.net. And click, click through on this, um, this image in the upper right to get to the, the YouTube video so that you guys could see that. Is someone, uh, someone doing that there? I'm, I'm working on it. Cool. Thank you so much. And which one was it that you wanted, Scott? If you could just click on where it says Spotlight in the upper right here, that'll, that'll take you through to YouTube. And then just play that video, and then we'll do Q and A. nuestras voces convirtiendo eh, los teléfonos celulares en una herramienta para la comunicación popular trabajadores jornaleros investigadores estudiantes organizadores programadores formamos parte de crear un sistema de software libre donde mandamos mensajes de texto audio video y mostramos nuestro mundo leyendo nuestra realidad para contar nuestras historias my name is Natalie Ariano. My name is Ariano Montes. Mi nombre es Ranferi Velázquez. Manuel Mancilla. Madelu González. Hi, my name is Marco Rodriguez. Silence will never be an option. That's why I like mobile voices, because I can speak to the world. Nuestra voz viaja a través comunidades. Comunidades donde han sufrido la opresión, la violencia y la segregación. On the research side, our partnership supports media justice <coughs> efforts and seeks to advance the theory and practice of technology appropriation, participatory design, and action research. Creo estamos dando a conocer a todos los a todo el mundo de que nosotros los latinos podemos. Mobile voices lets you express what goes on around you or to you. It doesn't matter if you express it with a single image, a sound recording, a video, or even with a text. Because you are being heard, people are learning about what's going on. Este son de las cosas que casi no se, no se ven a diario. 
Voces móviles es nuestra realidad. Las manos. Las manos de las mujeres y hombres trabajadores que vienen a dejar aquí todo su esfuerzo a contribuir a la economía de esta gran nación. Voces móviles permite contar nuestras propias historias, mostrar nuestra esencia y aporte económico y cultural a esta nación. Great, thank you for, uh, for, for doing that. Put me back up. Uh, so that's pretty much uh, my presentation, and then I wanted to uh, do, do a Q&A. Um, yeah, so the system has the capacity to send both text messages and multimedia messages back out to the phones of, uh, of people who have signed up for different groups to receive them. And that's something that we're just uh, basically alpha testing now. So we have core groups of users that we're testing the message send uh, functionality. We're, we're integrating a new uh, module called VoIP Drupal, which is being developed by uh, Leo Bird over at uh, MIT's Civic Media Lab. And uh, that's going to add a bunch of really cool functionality, including the ability to uh, basically do phone calls out to users, um, as well as sending the SMS and, and MMS. So the idea, yeah, is to build it as a complete kind of two-way system. Um, it's kind of, it's, you know, how do you reimagine citizen journalism um, for communities that don't have a lot of access to the mobile, uh, sorry, to computers? Uh, we also think that this system is going to be really useful uh, in developing countries. Um, you know, if you look worldwide, you know, the mobile phone penetration rate versus the internet, um, it's kind of amazing. You know, in, in uh, 2011, we've got around 4 billion uh, mobile subscribers on planet Earth um, compared to only a few hundred million, uh, you know, uh, internet uh, individual subscribers. And so, and the vast majority of those 4 billion mobile lines it's cheap phones, prepaid phones, it's not data plans, it's not data phones. So we're kind of building a citizen journalism system for the other uh, 3 billion, 900 million people. And uh, we think it's, it's uh, pretty exciting. And it's, it's obviously useful right here in, in the United States among communities that have very low levels of computer access, but also uh, useful uh, in a lot of contexts around the world. Uh, I would say the opposite. I mean, if anything, since we've been trying to build the site shoot through this shared process with the community organization, the, uh, the issue that we've had is that a lot of people, whenever people hear about this, a lot of groups want to get involved immediately. They want to come in and start actually just immediately kind of posting and blogging on the site. But since we have been building the site together with this community, we really want them to have ownership over it. So they are right now going through the process of deciding um, basically an affiliation process which, by which other groups and community groups that want to get involved, um, what criteria are they going to have to meet in order to become bloggers on the VosMob site. So they were very clear from the beginning that they didn't want to just build a site that was designed to, like, like they're not interested in building just another, um, you know, Twitter or Facebook or another general purpose uh, social networking site. They really want to build a space that's going to feature and highlight the voices of their community and communities like theirs, so people who really don't have digital access. Um, so it's been about trying to figure out how do we grow the project uh, in a way that everyone who's involved is comfortable with it growing, rather than just kind of throwing it open to everybody to um, 
I guess, just post their cute cat pictures, you know, which is, I love cute cat pictures, but that's not what VosMob.net is, is about. So it's, it's more really trying to figure out how to grow that uh, community of, of bloggers on the site um, in a way that, that the, uh, the organizations that have created it are, are happy with. Yeah, absolutely. So it grows in a number of different ways. Uh, one is that we've developed a curriculum, which is a basically a grassroots community journalism training toolkit for how do you do how do you do this? How do you do community journalism with cell phones? We've been developing that in collaboration with People's Production House out of New York and the New Mexico Media Literacy Project, um, and that's going to be. Uh, published this summer. It'll be actually released at the National Conference for Media Reform in Boston uh, in, in, in a couple weeks. And uh, it'll both be freely available online for other community organizations to download and use to do local trainings on cell phone journalism. Um, and it will also be, uh, there will be a print version of it that's, that's available for sale. Um, in terms of the code base, as I said, the code is all free and open source software. So that means that while we are trying to be intentional about how we're growing VosMob.net itself, uh, we encourage other groups to take the code and set up their own version of the site. So if you actually go to uh, code.vosmob.net, uh, that will take you to our code repository, which is publicly and freely available on, uh, on Gitorius. And you can just download the code. You can install it on your own server. We actually have detailed installation instructions on our, uh, on our wiki, which is at wiki.vosmob.net. And that's where you'll have sort of detailed instructions for how do you download our code, how do you install and configure a server, how do you test it, um, all that kind of stuff. And we have a number of other organizations that have now started to install and test, uh, test out new instances of the Vosmob code. The next step to make it even more user friendly for people who want to create their own version of the site is going to be a hosted uh, multi-site installation. And so this would be um, you know, similar to, OK, so you know WordPress? Um, raise your hand if you're familiar with WordPress. Great, OK, so, so WordPress is both a hosted site for bloggers at WordPress.com and it's also free software, which you can download and install yourself on your own server if you go to WordPress.org, right? So VosMob will do something similar in terms of how we, how we grow and become more widely useful. So currently, we only have our, our one main instance, which is VosMob.net, and then we have our code, which is at code.vosmob.net. What we're going to do next year is set up a kind of a hosted multi-site installation I'm not sure what it's going to be called yet and whether it will be, you know, maybe it'll be vosmob.com or maybe it'll be named something entirely different. But the idea there would be people, if you don't have the knowledge to download and install your own version of the code, um, it would be a hosted site where you could go and just quickly and easily like create and configure your own uh, vosmob.site. Um, so that would be sort of the next, uh, next stage of, of, of uh, growth for more people to be able to use the tools that we've actually developed if they don't have the capacity to set up and host their own version of it. The other thing that people can do is, um, are any of you actually running Drupal sites now? So OK, so three of you are, already have Drupal uh, sites. So what you can also do is download and install the modules that we've created specifically for um, SMS and MMS integration into Drupal sites. You could do that now. So you could just download those modules and install them on your own existing Drupal site. Um, the, key, the key modules would be the SMS registration module and the SMS filters, um, and also plugins for Mail Handler, which is the Drupal module that lets you post to Drupal sites using uh, email. Um, so uh, to get a little kind of techy and geeky on you, the way that we post into the site is um, by using the uh, MMS gateways that the, all major phone providers in the US have available. So you know your, your phone has an email address. And you can send 
messages to your phone via email. And you can also send emails from your phone, even if you don't have a data plan, by sending it via the SMS or MMS gateway. So if you have a cheap prepaid phone and you send an MMS to like your email, your own personal email address, it, it, you'll, that, that picture message will arrive in your mailbox and it will arrive from like your phone number at sms.att.net or mms.att.net or if you're on Verizon it goes through the gateway and it comes it arrives it arrives coming from um, your phone number at vzwpix.com so we're taking advantage of those free gateways to post into and out of the web um, we are also working on our own standalone gateway uh, because that's not the case in every country but um, so so basically when you use those gateways the phone companies add a lot of uh, junk to the messages, so they put ads in it, and they add their logos, and sometimes they don't even pass the media files through. They just send you a link, because they're assuming that you're going to click through the link, because uh, they assume you have web access. So part of what we've done is we built these systems, these uh, modules, to scrape out the uh, the media files and the story that was sent by the original user, delete the advertisement, and if there's only a link available, go and grab the media files and kind of download them and post them into Drupal. So all of that is just to say that uh, if you're running a Drupal site, you could also just install our modules, and then your site would be, uh, users could then register for your Drupal site uh, via SMS or MMS, and they could also post content into your site um, you know, via SMS or, or MMS. Um, so that's another way that people could incorporate the work that we've done into their own existing projects. Um, yeah, absolutely. So uh, I think one of the, a, a lot of times when there are mobilization events or people sort of organizing and pushing uh, on different legislation that's been going on, uh, people are posting stuff uh, extensively onto the site and then that's getting spread out across social media and also being picked up by both print and broadcast journalists. Uh, so we've, for example, um, around SB 1070 in Arizona, We've had a number of people actually travel over to Arizona from here in Los Angeles to participate in uh, protest marches and that kind of thing, and then document that um, around the Dream Act campaign. Um, are you guys familiar with that at all? The the Dream Act. So so yeah, so the, you know the Dream Act would uh, is would be a path to citizenship for people who were brought here as very young children and have gone successfully through high school and are now trying to enter either college or the military. Um, and get citizenship so they could do that. Uh, we actually had Dream Act uh, students live blogging the occupation of, uh, they, they did a sit-in uh, in Congress uh, last summer, and they were uh, live blogging that using their cell phones right onto bossmob.net, and that got a lot of sort of traffic. Um, so absolutely had people using the site to kind of everyday activism that the immigrant community uh, is, in, is involved in. Um, as well as sort of more long-term sort of organizing strategies. Uh, just, just recently, the um, uh, household workers and domestic workers in New York State just recently won a legislative victory where they're now, uh, they're considered workers like any other worker and they're able to, um, uh, how can I put this, uh, labor law that applies to all other categories of workers has never applied to domestic workers in New York State, except for just recently the Domestic Workers Alliance managed to get that changed. And they're now launching a nationwide campaign for a Domestic Workers Bill of Rights, which would basically consider domestic work to be, uh, late labor law would apply. And so there was also sort of live blogging of the National Conference of Domestic Workers, which is launching that national campaign. So a lot of that is going on, and I think you're absolutely right. The real interesting impact comes when media that has more reach picks up these stories that are being produced by the 
grassroots journalists. So again, you know, LA Times has done coverage, CNN and Espanol has done uh, a lot of coverage and interviews with the VAS mob workers. Um, we've been on Radio Bilingue, we've been on the Pacifica Network, the uh, public radio station here. Um, uh, we've, we're getting, especially when there's a big mobilization happening and there's some interesting live sort of blogging coverage happening on Boss Mob, that's when we get a spike in traffic and that's when uh, print and broadcast journalists notice it more and want to do, you know, then some features about the project and about the stories that have been produced by the Boss Mob journalists. So um, you're right, I think the biggest impact really comes when you have that intersection between the citizen journalism and community journalism, and then when that gets put out into wider circulation via uh, print and broadcast, but also via online uh, news sites that have a much larger you know, readership. So like the, you know, the online version of the LA Times article got a lot of traffic and drove a lot of traffic to the site. So we definitely are thinking of it that way and uh, try and do, you know, when we have a really powerful story, we'll do outreach to journalists that work for larger media outlets and say, hey, uh, did you know this was going on and we have some coverage of it? Do you want to do a story about it? You know, you could use our media elements if you'd like to. Um, so we try and use it to help, I guess, with some, of, some you know, agenda setting. Um, it's almost like... If there's a, a video or some or some images or a, a compelling story, um, you know where we've done almost like a rough draft of it on Vasmab, then you know journalists for for mass media outlets might be more interested in actually covering that story. Great, thanks. So check out the site, and uh, if you want to get in touch with me, just um, you know my my uh, my info is in the program, so you can get in touch with me that way. Thanks. Bye.